A deer with antlers and tusks? No way. No such thing. Well, this is going to be some unbelievable hunt footage of calling in the rare and elusive free-range moonjack. Hold on. We're stalking deer the British way. Presented by the Peppy Family's Jonas Brothers Studios. Museum quality taxidermy since 1908. Reeves Munjak were originally brought from China to Britain in the 19th century. Originally from an area of China called Guangdong, they are now widespread and increasing in numbers and range throughout southern England. They're also known as barking deer from the repeated loud bark they emit when they sense danger. The stone-walled fields and forests are perfect habitat for spot and stock hunting for one of the most unique critters that exists anywhere. Hunting Munjack, when they won't come to a call, is virtually impossible. There's one calling already. Barking. Yeah. They hide out and forage in the thick stuff, and it takes a real expert like Kevin to get them to come in close and give you a shot. Hey, here's one coming right here. probably thinking to yourself, why don't these guys have to hide like you would for a turkey or whitetail? These munjack leave the thickets when they hear the call and walk out in the open, but if you hide, you can't see them coming through the thick stuff, and it's hard to judge their age and size if they're not out in the open and they're hiding out in the bush. He's just a young one, huh? Yeah, he's not old enough. Yeah. That guy's not old enough. They're not that big. Their horns are only a couple inches long. That's him barking. That's a little old one. Yeah, by his voice, his voice is quite like this. Oh, here he is right here. He's behind this road in Denver. It's interesting calling him in like that. Maybe he won't make the same mistake when he gets a bit older. Yeah. He's a little more educated now. Look at him, oh, look at him stomping his leg. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's unbelievable that they'll come like that. Yeah. Oh, he's hip to the program now. <laughs> that was great. Well done. <laughs> you hear about all this and you just think there's no way they're going to come in and, you know, it, it, it's exciting. It's not. It's like. A, Yeah. 
good buck. He's a really good buck. He's going to come to our left. He's going to he's going to walk past, try and catch our wind. Take him when he's safe. When you've got a nice backdrop. I'll, I'll squeak again, just to try and get him to stop. It comes out of there. Yeah. Just keep following. Make sure he's safe. Just make sure he's safe. I got nothing. I got sticks right there. Okay. He's coming through, he's coming through, he's gonna try to get behind us. You ready? Yep, yeah, okay. That dropped him right in his tracks. Yeah, nice trophy, very nice trophy. <laughs> well done. That's that's just what we're looking for. It's very, very long, old, old butt. He's, he's nice and heavy in the base. Even his, you could see even this, at that distance, you could still see his tusks. See his canines, he's got yeah. one. A lot of the older bucks break their, their canines. Um, It'll be interesting to see what he's got on him. Yeah. Basically, they've got the canine similar to the water deer, but you know their main armory is their antlers. You know, and typically, you know, on those old bucks, you've got a tiny little brow point runs up to about half an inch, and then you've got the length. He's got plenty of length, and he's got some thickness in the bases. And, That's incredible. Uh, man. Go and have a look at him. Good job. Huh? <laughs> Let's go see. Oh, well done. That good, good, awesome. good. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the Munjaka. Huh? What an animal. So unique. Kevin, this has got to be the only animal that I can think of that has both tusks and horns, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, Is there you know, a... if, you, if, you actually, if you actually think about it, all deer have got tusks, you know? But yep. what they have, they're not developed as this. This guy's. He's, he's a few clicks down the evolutionary chain. You've got all the elk, all the New World deer have all got whistling teeth, but they've, they've retracted and where they don't use them anymore. Gotcha. These guys, you know, you'd still use these as weapons. They fight. If you look here on his ear, you yeah. see the shred? Yeah. You know, this is this is an old buck been fighting. And if you look, he's, he's, he's got one tusk short. That, that's uh -oh. all. You know, these old boys, they lose their tusks. But, that's a really, really nice, mature animal, old, old animal. Got little brow points here. And look, his horns are perfect yeah, there. And what's this gland? Look, they got a gland right on the front yeah. of their head. They got, they've got the frontal lobe glands there. You can see. Is that what stinks? Yeah, and it's like mm. a must. It's like the must deer. It's the same thing. And then if you, <laughs> sorry, you don't have to get too affectionate. <laughs> I just had to get the smell off my hand. <laughs> this is the orbital gland, and if you look Whoa. at it, that's incredibly, uh, you know, and they'll, they'll use these to scent mark, and they'll scent mark all the way around their territory. Well, thanks for having us, man. Yeah. This has been yeah. unbelievable. Well, well done. Always a great time hunting with you, and a lot of fun, and getting to hunt these unique animals here in England. I know a lot of people don't really think of southern England as being, you know, a area to go hunting, but if you're looking for a great adventure in a fantastic place with some really wild and exotic animals, free range out here, running around the countryside, you gotta love England. Kevin Downer, thanks a million, man. Oh, thank that was you great. So much. Thank, thank you. you.